Hi there, this is Unmesh from Perfect, and today I'm going to share with you 5 extremely simple steps to add and create mood in your photos with Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first step here is to add a selective blur. Now what is selective blur? It is just adding blur selectively. Now whenever we want to make or enhance something or make something pop, what do we do? We either sharpen the subject or sharpen whatever we want to, you know, enhance or draw the attention to, or we want to blur everything else. Now, since in this case, the subject is already as sharp as it can be, it more, it makes more sense to blur things to draw the attention of the eye towards the face. So first, let's make a copy of the background layer, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now we can name this selective blur just for organization null purposes. Now let's go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Why do we do this? Because whatever filter we apply, we want to be able to have the ability to change the values later. Hit OK once you're satisfied. You don't have to be satisfied, just hit OK. Or when you do that, let me go back and show that to you again. Whenever you go to filter, convert for smart filters, you don't want this dialog box to show up, just check on this, don't show again and hit OK, it won't show this again. I'm going to check it off because for teaching purposes, you get the point. Check it in. Now, let's go to filter, blur gallery, and then the one that we are looking for is iris blur. Now, the way iris blur works is pretty interesting. Take a look. These are the four points. We can bring it closer. And this is the outer boundary of the circle. Now, let's keep the blur as at about, let's say, 200 pixels. Now, what happens is the blur inside these four points at this area is zero pixels. Now, starting from these points and to the boundary, it keeps on increasing to how much? To whatever number you have put here. So right now it is 200. So it increases from zero slowly and gradually it keeps on increasing 200, 150 and then 200 and beyond this boundary, it is 200. All right, you get the point. Now we can move this towards the subject's face and then make it a little more longer. Now we have to bring the points closer to the subject's face. And if we bring one point closer, every point moves. We don't want that to happen. We want to be able to control the points individually. And the way you do that is by holding the Alt key or the Option key. When you hold the Alt key or the Option key and then you drag the point, have a look. You move these individual points. So I'm going to move this point to the face as well. Maybe we can keep it that way. And this one to the head. Now, it looks really beautiful and it's a very interesting kind of effect. However, what we want is a little mild version of this. This is the original. We can go a little further, maybe something like this, maybe 75. Now, since this is a smart object, we can always change these values later. Hit OK once you're satisfied and boom, there you go. The next step, my friend, is simply lighting effects. If you have a close look at the image, the background is a little bright. Now, when it comes to photos, the human eye, the human attention goes to the areas of the photos which are brighter. In this case, it doesn't go as much onto the subject's face because it just compares with that of the background. So we need to make the background a little darker. And to be able to do that, we can use a spotlight effect first. So let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves right in there. Let's collapse this one. This was kind of, you know, messing me up a little bit. Anyway, once the curves is selected, we can just bring the right point, the point on the right hand side down. If you bring it all the way down, it will be absolutely black. We don't want that to happen. Maybe just about half and then create a point in the middle to add a little more contrast in the dark areas. We create a bent curve. Now, we don't want to apply it to the subject. So simply make sure that the mask is selected right in there. Then take the brush, make sure it is a hard round brush. Then just make the brush a little larger and my favorite word, dab on the face with black as the foreground color, just dab. Just make sure that the opacity and the flow is at 100. Now press Ctrl or Command T, make sure that the mask is still selected you will be able to have transformation on that area that you just dabbed in, all right, on that brush spot. Now, let's adjust it according to the subject, just like this. 
Now you might think this is pretty harsh and looks kind of childish kind of edit. No worries. With the mask still selected, click on the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and then make sure properties is checked. Now you can go to the mask properties right there and simply increase the feather. Feather means a little bit Gaussian blur for the mask. All right. So let's keep it. I would keep it at about, let's try 700. See how soft that is? Looks beautiful. Absolutely. So here's the before. Here's the after. Look how it's drawing the attention, drawing your attention towards the subject. Now, even when it's blurred, we can still transform it. Press Ctrl or Command T and then you can adjust it the way you want it. Maybe this is something that I like. Hit enter or return once you're satisfied. Now, if you want less of it, you can of course decrease or increase the opacity. But for me, I think 100% is fine. I'm going to change the canvas background to black. Looks more cool. To draw even more attention towards the face, let's add a little more highlights. So create one more curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and click a point in the middle. Take it up just like so. So this is pretty good highlight. Now select the mask and this time press Ctrl or Command I. I stands for invert. Ctrl or Command I. This will invert the mask, make it absolutely black. It's not being applied anywhere unless you paint in white. So with the brush selected, choose the soft round brush and then make sure that the foreground color is white and simply let's make the brush a little bigger. Just paint on the face, just dab, just like this. You see that softness right in there? Don't worry about the leaks, just dab. Dabbing is the secret. All right, let's go in there and just dab over the hand, maybe a little bit on the shoulders and a little bit right there at the top. Cool. Maybe an overall dab, just like this. Okay. Now, once you have done all the dabs that you wanted to, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and make the foreground color black. Now, we need to erase it from the areas where we don't want it. So, let's erase it from the extra areas. Also, to clean up a little better, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask to see which areas are remaining, and then you can simply paint on those areas with black. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask again to see. There we are. Have a look at it. So here's the before, here's the after. Interesting, isn't it? Now you can also take it away. You can take the highlights away from certain areas like under the neck, just like so. See, just doing that makes so much of a difference. I'm going to decrease the flow and do that to about 10%. Have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Just doing that makes a hell lot of difference. Now, if you want, you can take all the time in the world to play with the mask. So you can just select the mask, take the brush, and with a lower flow, just play with it. Maybe make these areas a little darker because those are the areas where light won't be reaching much. So here's the before, here's the after. Look at it. Maybe this part of the face, you want to make a little darker. Okay, maybe this part of the head, maybe the bottom part of her hand, and there we are. On top of that, if you want to add some dimension by taking it automatically away from the dark areas, we can always use blend if. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. This will take away the effect of curves from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layers which are lying under it. Let's take it even further. Now have a look, this is very harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and just take it further. I'm going to choose this value. This works fine with me and have a look at it. This is interesting, isn't it? Now I'm going to play with the mask a little more. Let's zoom in, take the brush, black as the foreground color with a lower flow, select the mask and then maybe the hair looks too bright. So let's darken it. This is just to enhance the face. So if we had made the hair a little too brighter, have a look. In this case, it just takes away the attention from the face. So that's why we darkened it a little bit. Now to take things up a notch, we can also add some highlights to the hair. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer on top of this. And again, take it up just like so. And then select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, and then just zoom in, take the brush with a larger brush again. In this case, we will just dab. Just make sure that the foreground color is white. Dab. Again, the flow is low. 
make sure it's 100 opacity at 100 all right we added some highlight over there let's add some highlight over here as well let's add some over here let's add here a little bit maybe there at the top maybe there maybe here now once we have added these highlights we need to clean up the extras so make sure black is now the foreground color you can press x to toggle between the foreground and the background and just paint away the extras also to add a finishing touch you can double click on the right hand side of the layer and add a little blend f hold the alt key or the option key click on the slider to break it apart and then just take it further there you are hit ok so before blend if and after blend if you know just add some dimension now i think this is too much highlighted so i'll go back to the mask and then just paint with black in there there you are have a look here's the before here's the after makes so much of a difference you can also decrease the opacity if you wish to so i'm going to keep it at about 70 now to finish it off with the lighting let's go ahead and add a faded effect now we all know that our attention also goes towards the areas which have more contrast as opposed to less contrast so why don't we take advantage of this in this photo and only fade the areas where we don't want the attention to go so let's go ahead and create another curves adjustment layer i'm gonna say that again i just love curves so take the point on the left hand side and take it up this just fades it now to add a little curve to it again curves you're going to create a point and take it down this will add a little more drama to it have a look here's the before here's the after looks beautiful faded but we want to take away the fade from the subject so select the mask take the brush with a soft round brush make it a little larger and just dab with black like that you see what kind of a difference it makes you can press ctrl or command t and just adjust it if you want to and bring it right in there and if you want you can select the mask go into the mask properties and then decrease the density to control how much you want to have contrast over there so i'm going to keep it at about 65 there you are interesting now after we are finished with the lighting let's go ahead and group all of these layers so select the topmost layer and hold the shift key and now select the bottom most layer related to lighting now press ctrl or command g with all of these layers selected and let's name this lighting step number three is simply color grading now we don't have to do anything way advanced in there we can simply use LUTs with color lookup table adjustment layer so simply click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup there you are and the one that i think that would be perfect for this image is crisp warm so from the drop down menu let's go ahead and choose crisp warm right in there now it's kind of too much so let's decrease the opacity to about 50 percent interesting color now it looks a little way too saturated right so let's add one more color lookup table and this time we need to add a lot that kind of desaturates everything just a little bit so for this one let's go ahead and choose futuristic bleak what do you think it kind of desaturates it right now let's decrease the opacity to about 20 percent because the desaturation is kind of too much so here's the before too saturated here's the after a little less let's increase it to 30 percent it's better now now you my friend are free to continue and grade it as much as you want but now we will move on to the next step which is adding texture now this is one of those techniques that i usually use almost all the time whenever i add a soft blur kind of effect because when you soften something too much have a look at the background we have blurred it a little bit it lacks texture and also at the same time it also might create some banding in the background as well so to avoid that and also to add an artistic and aesthetic thing to this texture is one of the best things to do but before we go ahead and add texture let's group both of these layers select the first one hold the control or command or the shift select the second one control or command g and let's name this color grading now the next step was adding texture so here we are in our finder or explorer and i have two texture which one do you want to use let's go with the numbers let's use texture one and uh, what about using both all right we'll use both so drag it and drop it over the canvas inside of photoshop just like this Let's make it a little larger hit enter or return 
and then let's try different blend modes. In this case, I think screen would work the best. So select the blend mode screen. It makes things brighter, but it's making it too bright. So let's decrease the opacity to about, what about 50%? Yeah, that is good. Now we need some contrast in it, right? And overlay is one of those blend modes which add contrast. So why don't we add this other texture as well with overlay? So let's go to our finder or explorer, just drag it. Now this has some chair and stuff in it, but it's okay, we can actually crop it out. Just drag it, drop it right there, make it a little larger so that the chair and everything don't show up. All right, they don't show up already. We can actually stretch it a little bit. This is fine. Don't worry about it too much. Hit enter or return. Now, just change the blend mode from normal to overlay. There you go, look at the interesting texture. I love it. I don't know about you, but I really, really like it. At this point, I think this is going too bright. And this is actually because of texture one and the screen blend mode. So let's decrease the opacity of that even more to about 40%. There we are. Now let's group both of these layers. So with the texture one selected, hold the control or command, select texture two, both of them are now selected. Press control or command G and let's name this texture. Cool. Now at this point, we can actually get done with the image and it's all done, but we lack one more step. And this is a step that we include in almost everything. When it comes to editing a photo, when it comes to retouching, when it comes to creating a composite, and that is the finishing touches. If you look at this image, there might not be something that you might want to add to this. However, when you go ahead and take a break and come back to this image, you might see something that you missed previously. In this case, I see if you zoom in, the eyes are not grabbing as much attention as it should. So why don't we brighten it up a little bit? So let's go ahead and create one more curves at the top. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and then click and create a point in the middle and drag it up just like this. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or command I. Now see where the light is coming from. The light is coming from the top left right there. On the opposite side in the iris, there will be brightness. So let's make the brush a little smaller with white as the foreground color. All we need to do with flow and opacity at 100, just dab on the opposite side, right in there. Similarly, do the same thing right there. See how much brightness it adds to it. Now, we want to take it away from the pupil. We also want to take it away from the other areas as well. Just like so. Do the same right there. All right. Once you have done that, double click on the right hand side of the layer and use blend if to make it more natural. Hold the alt key or the option key, click on the slider on the left hand side and just take it to the right. There you are, making the eyes a little more brighter to grab the attention. Have a look, just a minute difference, but makes a lot of difference. Here's the before, here's the after. Once you zoom out, it does make a ton of difference. Maybe in the finishing touches, you might want to add a light leak, maybe a gradient. That's totally up to you. But we can actually stop here. Maybe I'll add something later. I don't know. But at this point, this looks perfect to me. So there you go. Five simple steps to add mood to your photos with Photoshop. All you got to do is first add a soft focus effect or a selective blur effect. We can use iris blur. We can also use different points in the field blur. Anything you want to use, you can use. The point is we need to draw the attention of the viewer towards the subject, which brings us to step number two, which was lighting. With lighting, we used a spotlight effect. We made the subject brighter by actually just making everything else darker. We also added some highlights to the face to draw the attention towards it. After that, we did color grading and we didn't go too complex in it. We just added a couple LUTs. That's it for the color lookup adjustment layer. And then we added texture, which really added a lot to the image and at the end, do not forget it. Take a break and get back to the image. You will see things that you might have missed. In this case, it was brightening up the eyes. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixin Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.